How's it going? New World Sephir here, and today we are back with some exciting news. We were talking about that December patch that was gonna be huge, and everybody was memeing on the turkey, but that was just the beginning of it. Here it is. It's finally coming. Christmas is here. December PTR announcement is going up, so that means there will be a new PTR soon with new content for you guys to test out and check out before it hits the live servers. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what New World has to offer here. So we're going to start off with the tournament's ever-evolving world as such to continue the efforts of providing players with an assortment of ongoing new features, content, and changes. Similar to the activities leading up to our last major update, we are approaching the release of our next large patch, and we would like to once again invite you all to participate in the next cycle of our public test realm, PTR. So this is going to be the PTR's limited time availability server set that will give players an early look at upcoming features. This is pretty much the same thing that we've seen before. We're going to go ahead and skip through, but make sure you provide your feedback when you do go on this server as it will be all useful for adjusting things into the future. Looks like you're going to get geared out characters and items and all that good stuff. So it's the same drill as what we had with the Void Gauntlet patch. Uh, the PTR surfers will open tomorrow or December 3rd at 10 a.m. PT. So that's going to be 1 p.m. EST. So make sure to get on there and check all that stuff out. I will be checking it out as well. So tons of goodies to uh, discover there. And maybe you will get a little bit of stream action going. We'll see. I just got my new computer in today. So that'll be exciting to test out and see if I can get all that set up in time. Uh, so it looks like they're going through and checking about this, so it just looks like if you have any exploits or bugs or anything like that, just submit it on the PTR forums. So now we'll dive into the good part, the content, new limited time content. This looks, What is this guy, a Yeti with a Christmas hat? I like this. Christmas presents, all kinds of good stuff. Winter Convergence Festival. Wow, that sounds awesome. The holiday of Winter Convergence has arrived in Eternum, marked by the appearance of increased snowfall and northern lights in the sky, a la the Aurora Borealis. This is the time of duality and dictomy as the Yeti, the Winter Wanderer, comes to the land. And while in settlements, gifts are exchanged in the marked time of the passing year, outside the safety of the walls, there's rages a wintry war between the positive forces of winter, slumber, and perseverance. Championed by the champion, or championed by the Wanderer's uh, negative side. That's interesting. The player takes on the cause of the winter wanderer to collect winter tokens from repeatable events across the land able to turn them into holiday shop containing rare and cosmetic items the winter wanderer's positive aspect grows in power with each token collected and turned in so it looks like some sort of event and buff and some shop where you could get some nice stuff and i'm interested to see all this i will for sure be collecting every single thing there is to offer with this Icy Winds and Winter Wanderer bring with them new armors, weapons, furnishing, skins, consumables, and a delightful present offering gift emote or present or present gifting. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. We'll see how that kind of plays out. All themed off the wonderful Eternum holiday of Winter Convergence. So that was a big mouthful of a lot of words. Winter, 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 winter. That's all I saw in that whole thing. <laughs> like 80 times uh, but that's definitely going to be a fun event uh, we definitely need these in eternum right now and this is going to come at a great time right before christmas so it looks like winter villages the winter wanderer has set up four villages to facilitate joy and cheer of winter convergence uh, visit these villages in everfall monarchs bluffs weavers fen and brightwood to meet the winter wanderer and carry out his holiday quest so that seems like a great way to go through and sort of earn those holiday tokens so the activities are as follows. The Convergent Spirit. Celebrate the spirit of the season by giving a helping hand and decorating your favorite settlement. Uh, the Convergent Spirit is a special town project that allows players to complete special town project quests to upgrade each settlement's Tree of Light for improved daily rewards. I like that a lot. That's really cool. So we got some more town board action in, in case you missed that from your leveling process. Uh, the Lost Present Recovery. Um, those dastardly frigid folk are spreading their mischief and stealing presents across Eternum. Located throughout the world are lost presents to be recovered and turned in for winter tokens at the village, uh, winter village holiday huts. So that's gonna be fun. I do love good treasure hunts. I'm sure there'll be tons of people marking the locations of all these good things. And of course, I'll have a video covering that for everyone. So we'll be sure to find them all and get those sweet holiday rewards. Uh, the next one is the Gleamite collecting, uh, bright glittering Gleamite 
gleaming gleamite meteors of multiple multitude of color fall from the night sky during this time of year and as destructive as they are beautiful the showers are a new random dynamic event that occurs at night through a turn so keep your eyes and ears open as you search for locations where the showers are most prevalent exchange the harvest crystals for winter tokens at the winter village holiday huts and happy hunting so it looks like something's gonna fall out of the so sky and everyone's gonna rush there probably kill some mobs do some sort of event and then collect something on that so i do like a good hunt for things like that too looks like we have something else here the ice caves man this guy looks so cool i like this boss okay this is really awesome no pun intended or maybe pun intended ice caves are appealing all over eternum due to the winter warrior's desire for a forever winter there are snowy and icy caves that the yeti use their powers to freeze up and make the snow fall the rest of eternum will look uh will look like these ice caves if the onslaught of the warrior is not stopped the ice caves remain hidden behind the event as scars on the land sources of wintry magic that refuse to melt even if the warrior is defeated so new looks like sounds like to me points of interest where you're gonna find a cave of ice and fight some sort of a boss monster that sounds really cool hopefully he has some awesome drops with him looks like we got new content new quests in addition to the new quest series offered by the winter wanderer of convergence festival there are several new side story quests the territories offered in restless shore and morningdale this update also introduced a new quest series associated with housing, and after you've completed the main story quest, Encroaching Corruption, seek out artifact or architect Giacomo, Giacomo? <laughs> Atolvi? Oh man, these guys have some crazy names. Anyways, he's near the starting settlement to begin the quest, and you can get some further quests from him as you level up and progress your territory standing. So that's something cool. I do like new quests, and I'm interested to see what they got for the winter theme coming on new journal categories so new quests uh, have been added to the journal for the epic armor and weapons quests and skill progression the update is accompanied by a new map pins for all the quest types so it's good more achievements more journal things new features expertise and gypsum system oh okay based on the feedback of the high watermark system and our desire to have compelling and diverse end game we've made some major updates to the end game we've added a new resource called gypsum that can be acquired each day by doing a variety of activities open world name bosses expedition bosses outpost rush arenas corrupted breaches etc each activity rewards a different type of gypsum that can be crafted into a gypsum orb these orbs can be crafted into gypsum casts of any weapon, armor, or trinket type. Opening a gypsum cast will guarantee an expertise bump and gear of that type. Ooh, that's that's very interesting. So basically, we have a way to bump up our gear score besides just RNG picking up boxes and running dungeons over and over. So you can actually kind of hand target the type of gear you want and really focus in on that. That is a brilliant move. Great job, AGS. This is going to be fantastic for the end game. We've also renamed the high watermark system to expertise to now display the current expertise level of each slot on your avatar in the inventory. Oh, great. So I don't have to track it on a notepad anymore. That's fantastic. Uh, players can easily track their progress. And we also show a level up banner anytime your expertise level increases. So that's going to be cool to see as well. I like the polish and the finesse on that. Lastly, we're adding two new in-game POIs where players can challenge themselves with difficult content and try to progress their expertise with level 66 enemies and elite chess, both Malevolence in Eden Grove and the Imperial Palace slash North Dynasty Shrine have been upped to level 66. That is why those areas had such scuffed drop rates and they just kind of looked unfinished. Yeah, they were, they, they weren't fully completed. Uh, so now that's gonna be awesome. That's two new things to add into your mix and the Imperial Palace area is beautiful. It's phenomenal. It's a great place. I love doing it just for the food recipes, but once I was done there, there was nothing else to do, but now it's gonna be level 66. So you're gonna have really high level loot dropping there. It's gonna be fantastic for watermarks. It's gonna be fantastic for legendaries and BIS drops, it's going to be great for everything, so that's super exciting. Next, we have Trade Skill Aptitude. We want to continue rewarding the efforts you make to craft items for yourself, your friends, or to make a buck on the trading post, and we've introduced a Trade Skill Aptitude. Upon reaching 200 and a Trade Skill, leveling 
The leveling circle will update to show three markers equidistant from each other on the circle. Okay, what do they mean? Earning trade skill XP will begin progressing you again, and when you reach one of these markers, you will be awarded with a container of useful items that are mostly trade skill relevant, such as craft mods, special ingredients, and schematics and recipes. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. So basically, the more you hone in on one profession, you're probably going to get keep getting tons of loot and recipes related to that profession that's really nice i like this little progression system here this is very good touch each subsequent marker rewards a more spectacular container with more rewards than the one before so it's going to pay to focus in on one profession and that's really nice to see gaining enough xp to go all the way around the circle will increment the aptitude counter by one the counter will keep counting so you can keep track of how many times you've wrapped your progression at the top level they've also introduced a new type of reward with the system equipment patterns an equipment pattern are crafting artifacts that enable you to craft a guaranteed gear score 600 item that has a specific appearance wow that's very powerful patterns require a significant amount of powerful crafting resources to create but guarantee a gs 600 item Patterns still roll perks, and players have the normal amount of control over whether the outcome uh, of that thing comes with crafting mods or Azos, so everything's the same, you just guarantee it 600. Equipment patterns have a small chance to drop from Arcana, Weaponsmithing, Armoring, and Engineering Aptitude Chess Rewards. So that's going to be phenomenal as well. So you, that's basically RNG mitigation, right? You can only get unlucky so many times, and then you're going to get a token that says, hey, I don't care about luck. I'm getting what I want guaranteed. <laughs> so that's nice to see uh, just for people that are getting a little unlucky on that. So that's cool. Next, we have PvP balance changes. This is going to be interesting. Let's see what they got in store. Uh, due to an issue on an initial PvP damage formula that calls lower gear to be more beneficial and damage mitigation. Yep, we've updated the formula. We are now forward uh, to hearing your f uh, feedback on the suggestion. PvP damage formula update. We adjusted the way armor mitigation is calculated to use enemy's gear score value instead of your average gear score value. Okay, that's a huge difference. Uh, to adjust for the difference in armor mitigation, we increase the damage low-level players do to high-level players and reduce the damage high-level players do to low-level players. Okay, let's keep reading before we make judgments on all that. Crit damage application. Crit damage bonuses from masteries and perks are now applied additively instead of multiplicatively. On average, this will reduce the extra damage they provide by a small percentage. Yeah, that definitely will. Buffer windows. A general consistency pass has been done all across weapons to adjust the buffering windows for dodges, abilities, and basic attacks. Their updated buffer window starts when the first frame of the attack would deal damage or on the first casting frame of the cast of abilities that did not deal damage. Okay, that's interesting as well. I want to see how that feels in-game because they could say a bunch of things, but really that feeling in-game is going to be what it comes down to. Um, so what I read from this the armor calculation is basically going to be more based on what the enemy has, I guess. We adjusted the way armor mitigation is calculated to use enemy's gear score value instead of your average gear score value. Okay, so that means that your armor is going to be... What you have is going to be more affected versus somebody else based on how good of equipment they have. So they need to have better equipment to take less instead of just squishing everything down to some crazy degree and then there's still that sort of level scaling i don't know why they're so focused on low level players dealing damage to high level players um is that just me comment down below don't you think like most people playing the game right now are level 60 uh, maybe there are some that aren't but are they in wars or actively pvping i mean maybe they are but when they just level up and then pvp seems really weird uh but anyways i, I guess it doesn't matter because once everyone's at 60 that that scaling is irrelevant too um so i guess we'll have to see how that plays out that's a lot of good stuff i want to see how it plays in the game i, I really do um so i'm going to get on the ptr uh, when this opens up and i'm going to test the living crap out of it <laughs> and we're going to see exactly how it works and i'll let you know after that so it looks like they have a bunch of PTR FAQs, and if you want to read that, you can go ahead. It's the same old stuff from the last patch on the uh, Void Gauntlet thing, so make sure to check that out if you want to. But overall, I think this patch looks phenomenal. Uh, in my opinion, we need these special enemies. We need more zones to farm. We need more events to do, and this is exactly what we want. Amazon is delivering. Hopefully everything works out good. I love this expertise and gypsum system. These are fantastic. They will help players obtain the 
gear that they want so they can start focusing on important things like trying out all the builds that they want, messing with the different perks and armors and getting all the best in slot stuff and really figuring out how the game is played because at the moment, no one can afford to figure out how the game is played, right? Because it's so hard to get the perfect combination of armor and weapons and all that stuff. Uh, so this will definitely be a good uh, look through on that. But I like it. I'm looking forward to collecting all the limited time content uh, rewards. I will definitely be doing that every day. And I'm very excited to see the two new end game zones and the adjustments to end game loot progression. I think this will be huge and definitely a great boon for the game. So all in all, fantastic patch, 10 out of 10. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna check it out in the PTR. Hopefully we can get this before Christmas or right up in there, and that would be phenomenal for me. Uh, once again, if you have enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. We have a join button if you're interested in becoming a member and want some further updates in the future. We also have a Discord if you wanna come hang out with us at any time. Thanks for watching the video, and we will catch you in the next one.